All right, so I wanted to make a video today about like appreciating or actually more like not forgetting um, you know there was this one thing that happened I'll tell you the story like recently um, uh, you know wh when I was buying a bike off um, you know there was this one girl she was really like struggling and had issues and I'll tell you the story about that but it, it shows like how people change when the situation changes so um, so yeah, anyway, welcome to my channel where we talk about bikes and Bible verses and um, the verse really that I want to talk about today is in Luke 17 where Jesus heals like the lepers, the ten of them and only one comes back and and says thank you to thank Jesus and, and Jesus is like, where's the other nine? You know, I healed I heal ten of you. So for this video, I was like, the other day I woke up at like 3 or 4 a.m. in the morning I couldn't go back to sleep um, like uh, I woke up and then I started to think about this topic uh, it was just the other day usually like I um, usually like I take a week or so to write a topic to think about it but this like I just sort of woke up and I started thinking about this so like when I woke up I remembered something that happened to me like recently um, like it was you know, maybe two months ago, like, I, I woke up, I was woken up by a really bad pain uh, in my in my back, right? I pulled a muscle in my back while I was sleeping. And, um, and then, you know, I was, like, in pain for a couple of days. Like, I mean, I got sort of better after a few days. Then I went to um, church that Friday, and uh, the minister, he said, you know, like he, our minister prophesies, right? He says things like out of prophecy, and he says there's someone with a pain, you know, on on the right side, and he point lower back, right side, and he pointed to it, and and like that was exactly where my pain was. Like I didn't tell anyone. Like he just, he was just sort of getting up and saying, you know, someone's got a pain, this and that. Anyway, like I went and I prayed. They prayed for me, and I, I told them, I told the church what happened to me, and. Um, when I woke up, the, I remembered that time. I remembered how much pain I was in, uh, and and I felt like I had to appreciate. I I really felt the sense of needing to appreciate that you know I'm not in pain anymore, and like that prophecy that happened, it's kind of like God is saying I acknowledge like God knows about what I went through and um, it's sort of like you know God's acknowledgement and then and then so when I woke up last uh, two nights ago I really felt that sense of you know I'm not in pain you know I was going through this really hard situation like it was so painful at the time like if I were to get up I would throw up from the pain like you know that level that pain level where you, you know you throw up and um, and then I just really had to appreciate um, I really felt a sense of appreciation that I'm you know I'm living sort of without that pain you know I'm just living a pretty good life something also recent happened that that points to this uh, and it's like the story of the ten lepers like I went to look for a bike yeah a week two weeks ago right like I saw this bike it was pretty cheap uh, I, I don't have a road bike now, I sold my R1, but um, it was pretty cheap, and I rang, and uh, uh, and um, and then she tells me, she's like, look, the bike's completely dead, it's dead, like, you, you turn it on, the, doesn't, the dash doesn't light up, nothing, right, this bike's worth about seven grand, um, she, she told me, she goes, look, five and a half grand, come grab a trailer, come grab it as is. She's like, I've had so much problems with this bike, I'm, I'm over it, I'm done with it, you know, it's dead. Now, the thing is, um, the value of a bike in that state is probably about, it's, it's scrap value. So maybe three grand, four grand if she's lucky. And, and so she's like, she's in this hard situation, right? She's in this really hard situation. And honestly, I was prepared. I'm like, look, she's kind of helpless. Like, if it was me, I could handle that situation better. 
So um, I was prepared to offer five and a half, which no one would no one would offer that much. Um, and then I went up, and and I actually it's funny I couldn't get a trailer. Like I just wanted to go up get a trailer. I agree, five and a half grand. I'm probably the only person willing to pay that much. I was like I'll do it just to help her out because she's stuck. I could probably handle the situation better than her. You know I said I'll, I'll give her the five five and a half grand for it. The funny thing was. Like, I couldn't get a trailer. It was so weird. It was like, it was such a weird thing that I could not get a trailer for this bike. And so anyway, I'm like, look, I, I told her, I go, look, I can't get a trailer. But you know what? I just want to come have a look, you know? Like, I brought some stuff with me. I brought, like, jumper cables and some tools and stuff. I go, you know, do you mind if I just have a look? Maybe try... You know, this bike's been sitting there for a month. She rode it to work and it stopped. And she's been sitting out on the street for a month. She's sort of desperate. She just wants to get rid of it, right? And I'm like, look, let me just let me just bring some tools. Is that all right? Uh, we'll see what I can do. Otherwise, just gonna have to wait until I get a trailer. I went. I looked at it. I saw her. I, you know, I met up with with her and I met, um, looked at it. And a uh, little bit of fiddling around, and I actually got it started, right? Um, and then. <clears throat> I'm like, you know, oh yeah, cool, you know, the engine runs, I, I can verify the engine's good and everything. Um, so, um, I said, oh, alright, I'll take it, you know, five and a half grand. She's like, oh, it's working now, uh, seven grand. And, I, like, I <coughs> tried to talk her in, like, I was prepared to pay six, maybe six three or something like that, um, but not seven. And anyway, um, I was just back and forth with her and like her whole mindset, her whole attitude changed because the situ she, she, she forgot about the situation she was in. Her bike now works, you know, she's been desperate for a month, just sitting there, um, she couldn't do anything, she just wants to get rid of it. Now that it works, like she's a different person and that's how... A lot of people are. Um, you know, like when Jesus healed the lepers. They, you know, when they had leprosy, it's like, Jesus, have mercy. You know? Ten of them. They all got healed. And then only one of them comes back and says, you know, um, thank you for healing me. And Jesus is like, there was, there was ten of you. Where's the other nine? And, um... Anyway, like, I didn't mind with, you know, the, the bike. And I just wanted to help the girl, right? So, I did I did my job. Um, I helped her. I didn't get the bike, which is, doesn't matter. I already bought, like, a newer one. I wanted a newer one. Uh, so, so I didn't get her bike anyway. So, and it didn't actually matter for me. I just wanted to help her. Um, but it's funny how people just change, you know, when they're not in the situation and they forget. And that's what, we, you know, when God woke me up to, so I can remember that, I can remember that, you know, I was in this pain with my back um, not long ago. And just to sit and appreciate it, just to appreciate it. So, you know, like God's healed me from like God's helped me a lot God's healed me a lot you know like 20 20 years ago I had this really serious um, you know health scare and you know I, I didn't know what would happen in the future like that was 20 years ago and then you know I've lived 20 years since then and I was, I've been fine like like God um, you know healed me he didn't heal me instantly but like I was worried what was going to happen to me but here I am 20 years later through those 20 years you know and 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 everything and we just need to appreciate like God is there and he's trying to remind us of all the things that he saved us from and um one of the reasons is like you know with all the I've been praying I was praying recently for money I've been praying for money, like, I, I admit it, right, I've never prayed for money before, never, never, um, I've always, even, you know, but I guess, I don't know, maybe it's the times that we're living in, all these, um, you know, financial struggles and stuff, and, and God answered me directly, 
but his answer was no like you know I'd pray I'd pray for money and then you know next day I'd hear like a sermon um, and, and the guy would say God's not going to give you money if you pray for it or some, something like that like it's like a direct answer like multiple times you know, I, I, then I, later on I pray again, like in the two weeks later or something for money. And then I see like a YouTube video come straight up, you know. Um, and it's like, it, it felt like direct, it's not like confirmational bias or something where I'm just looking for these. It was like very, you know, right then and there, um, you know, the chances of that happening was, was you know, not <laughs> probable. So, like, I believe God is answering me, telling me, no, you need to rely on me and... and you sort of need to remember that like you remember all the good things remember that God cares for you like he cares for you you got to remember that and um, even when you know you might be praying for something really hard difficult and I've never had it where God just answers me right away um, but sometimes like God just sort of sits there and watches you you know what I mean like you're going through the hardship and he's He's not changing anything, but he's just sitting and watching, right? Because maybe something else is happening. Maybe there's some growth happening in you. And that's why God sort of wants uh, you to go through that. People think, you know, I'm following God. I believe in God. Why isn't God answering my prayer? Um, he always, maybe he doesn't answer right away. But he's always there for you if you are, you know, his true children. Obviously, there's other times where you're not, you know, you're not living, you, you, you claim to believe in God, you claim to be a child of God, but you're not living in that way. When it comes to, like, your sin and stuff, God's not in the picture. You don't want to make those, you don't want to turn away from sin, you don't want to turn away, from, you don't want to turn away from the things that God doesn't want you to, to be involved with. Um, but you're, like, happy to, you know, say that you're God's ch children, you know what I mean? You know, it's hard enough, even if you are living right for God, but I think God will always be there for you. Um, even though it might not be right away, it might be something that He's trying to get you to learn. So, uh, yeah, anyway, that's that's all I wanted to say, you know, just appreciate. God. I think God wants us to appreciate, like, the... The man with leprosy, the men with leprosy, and only one of them came back and said thank you. And know that God's always like there for us. So yeah, anyway, that's all I've got. Uh, if you like this video, please give it a like. Uh, and if you like my content in general, please, please subscribe. And take it easy and ride safe.